Good evening everyone, how is everyone today? Hopefully everyone can hear me okay and I'm coming through nice and clearly and hopefully everyone can see my screen. Uh, apologies for last night and uh, delaying it, the live stream till today. Um, I just was really tired. I hadn't slept for two days because of the kids and uh, work and whatnot. So yes, tonight we are back and we're doing a live tutorial and today's focus is looking at... Um, well, taking what we looked at Borderlands last week, we saw the use of barrels and had different types of barrels that do different things, such as uh, explosions and shocks and uh, poison, things like that. We're going to be doing that today and exploring how we could uh, achieve those similar effects in Unreal uh, today for us. Um, I've got chat open, so if you do have any questions, feel free to throw them up in chat. If I do miss your question because I'm too busy looking at my other screen, don't worry, just keep asking. I will eventually see it, hopefully. And if I don't, I apologize um, profusely. So let's get started, shall we? So we're doing barrel. So mate, the two things we'll be covering in this uh, video, in this well, live stream, is uh, these types of barrels. And also we'll be covering physical materials and talking about how they work and how we can use them, uh, physics materials or other, not physical materials, and talk about how we can use those to achieve some certain goals and things like that. Okay, so let's get started with our barrel. So I'm just going to create a new blueprint class and choose actor. And we're going to call this one barrel underscore parent. And the idea of being is that we have one parent barrel where which has um, all the same properties that all the other barrels share. But each of the other barrels will take it on their own um, reactions and so forth. So we have barrel parent and we're going to open this up. And we're going to give this a static mesh and and this will call mesh. And what I want this to do, I want this to be the actual physical component relate. Uh, I want to use the physics. No, sorry, let's go back. I want to use the collision mesh of my static mesh as the collider. So to do that, I'm just going to drag it onto my default scene route and that will make the mesh. It will use the meshes collision. Uh, to detect when it's been hit. So you don't have to worry about putting a capsule on it or anything like that. You can just use the meshes one here. So I've um, got a mesh there. And what we're going to do is, well, we can just give it a cylinder. Um, obviously, you would have your own mesh you'd make and import in from Blender or Maya, whatever you're using. And we have this mesh uh, set up here. Now, on the event graph, we'll need... Um, a couple of events or functions. Um, we're doing events rather. So we do custom event, and we have um, explode barrel. Okay, and that will be an event which we call when we want to well, explode the barrel. Pretty simply, um, it's going to have a health value as a variable. So going health, and we're going to change it to be a float, um, and. Also, we need health on it to determine when it explodes. Because what we're going to do, for example, with the uh, explosion barrel, is when you shoot it and take away some of its health, it's going to catch fire. And then if you kill it, it will explode and obviously do its thing. So we'll do health. Um, and we can leave it like that. That'd be fine. Uh, health, I'm going to set a default value of as... Um, we'll set a default value of 1. Okay. Okay, so we're going to close this now. And then right click on my barrel parent and create child blueprint class. And we're going to go barrel underscore uh, explosive. Okay. Now, this is a child of the parent, meaning it has inherited all the stuff we've just done. Um, but we also can put in our own unique stuff onto the explosive one here. Uh, one thing I want to do, though, is I want to make sure that my barrels are different colors. So it's easy for the player to identify what barrel does what. So for that, we need to make a custom material. So let's create a custom material. And we'll call this one barrel mat. And we're going to open it up. I'm not going to do anything fancy. We're just going to have a simple color on it. So I'm going to do a vector parameter. And the parameter is because we want this to change during the uh, development of the game. Okay, so this is a value that's going to change. So here we'll go um, barrel color and plug that into base color. 
and hit apply. We're not going to do anything crazy. We're going to leave it like that. Um, hello, Francesco. Hello, Jaffney. Hello, Dylan. Hello, X Draco. All my David. Hello, everyone else in chat who I can't see. Um, how are we all? We're all good. Hey, hey, uh, KK Louis. Um, right, so we've got barrel color. Now, this is an instance. Uh, sorry, this is a parameter, which means we, we can create a material instance um, of it. So I'm going to right click, create material instance. Pardon, suppose if I yawn, um, I'm still very, very tired. Okay, so we're going to use this instance as our main material for our barrel. So if I apply this to my barrel parent on the mesh here, and hit compile, that will now apply to the child one as well. But the difference is the child one, we can change the color of it. So to change the color of it here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my construction script. I'm going to drag my mesh out. And we're going to use the mesh's uh, dynamic in, uh, material. Uh, or can we do it straight from here? Set vector. Yeah, can we, we can. Okay, so we go set vector parameter on materials. And material uh, parameter name is going to be barrel color. And the parameter value is going to be the color we want to use. Now, to make this really simple for me, what I can do here is make a variable called barrel color. And we'll make this a color. Got to remember to do the American spelling. And click compile. So now on my barrel explosives, I can set barrel color to whatever I want. So we're going to make it red. And I'm going to drag that in, click get. Now if I plug that, oh, I need to plug it into this first. So I need to convert the color here to a, uh, a vector. So if I do two vector linear color, do that, I can then plug that in like so. Okay. So if I'm going a bit fast, I'm trying to fit all of this in within one hour. Um, so, so apologies for that. So this explosive barrel is now going to be red. Okay, because it's in a construction script, it means it will change and update when I update it into the world, like so. Okay, so now I've got an explosive barrel inside my world. Um, likewise, this thing has also health on it, which I can find on the class defaults. Over here, I have health. So, we want to... Oh, pardon me. Oh, so I'm professional. Yawning. Um, okay, so we've got ex explosive barrel. So let's do this for the other barrels as well. So I'm going to right click on barrel parent. We'll do barrel underscore poison. Or acid, whatever you want to do. And um, ah, what I should have done. This is what I should do. I should put this on the parent. It saves me doing the code over and over again. So I can cut that. Go to barrel parent. And put it on here. I then want to make my own barrel color variable on the parent. This saves me loads of time. Oh, let's make a linear color. Make it a bit easier. And get rid of that. Okay, so barrel parent now has that code we just did. Uh, I can get rid of it on here. Okay, so barrel parent has that code. So on barrel explosive, I can just change the color in the class settings to red and hit compile. And there you go. I then go to barrel poison. I can change the color here to green. And there you go. I can then make another one. Barrel shock. So it does electricity. Again, barrel color. I can change the color over here to whatever I like, like so. So that makes it very easy. So you can really take advantage of inheritance to save a lot of time and a lot of energy. So now we've got these different barrels. So I can drag them in like so. Okay. We're just going to focus on explosive first. Okay. So for explosion, we need to detect when we're going to get hit. So all these barrels are going to share that ability where you get hit by a projectile. 
And we've got the player projectile in the... Uh, I'm going to turn myself down on the volume there. Because that is loud in my ear. Let's mute it. There you go. So, so we've got projectile from the first person template. We're going to use that um, to detect when we hit that barrel. So to do that, we're going to go into our projectile first of all. We're going to make some changes to its um, event hit. So on event hit, by default, it's only going to affect things that are physics based, which we don't want because um, we don't want our barrels to go flipping all over the place as we're trying to shoot them. You, you can do, if you want, um, just make them really heavy so they don't go for flying everywhere. But for simplicity's sakes, we're not going to make them move. We'll just make them so you can shoot them. So I'm going to get rid of the impulse stuff. All this stuff here, we're going to get rid of and delete it. So when it hits the barrel, it's going to just destroy the projectile. And then what we're going to do is we're going to apply damage to whatever we hit. So this is on the projectile, remember. So on other, drag the other out and apply damage. Now the damage you want to apply will be based on sides your gun's strength or whatever you want to do. Um, I'm just going to put in one. It won't matter for the barrels. I'll explain that when we get to it. But you put in whatever damage value your gun's going to do towards your enemy's health or whatever you're going to do. So apply damage is an event which is quite special because what it does, it triggers another event on the thing it hits. So if we go to our barrel parent event graph and then right click and search for the event any damage this is the event that will trigger when it receives that hit okay um, so when we get this we can detect when we hit but you hit by something so I'm going to go and do um, print string and I'm going to say ouch so now this barrel is going to sh uh, shout out ouch when it gets hit by a projectile And that happens for whenever it gets it receives damage. So if you've got an explosion that happens next to it, that can also apply damage to it. It will work no matter what. So whatever will apply damage to something, like this barrel, it will trigger that apply damage uh, text. But obviously we don't want to do text. We want to do a lot more than that. Um, so let's get cracking on with that. I'm going to have a sip of my drink. Sorry. Oh dear. Uh, hello, Kameem, and hello, John. How are, how are we? And Dato, sorry. How are we all? Hopefully we're all following along as best we can. Um, we're doing barrels and explosive barrels and types of stuff like that. We also will be covering physics materials. So, um, yeah. Okay, so we've got the explosive barrel detecting when it gets hit by any damage. Nice. Now we have to deal with what this barrel's going to do in particular on explosives. So I'm just going to get rid of the print string. Um, we don't want to do anything there. What we want to do instead, we want to do damage to the barrel. So what I mean by how the, the amount of damage doesn't work, doesn't matter for the barrel, is because in a game, you don't want the barrel to take more hits if you've got a weaker gun. You want your your barrels to always sort of explode quite reliably. Um, so that way you, you're not gonna uh, just like explode it with just one straight bullet you can take a couple so what we're going to do is we're going to just simply apply any damage uh, uh, sorry event any damage we're going to take the health out get health subtract another float and we're going to subtract 0 0.2 that means it can take five hits to remove all the health from this barrel so i'm going to set that back to the health to store it so this barrel will take, will take five hits. If you want to add some randomization, you can do. You can just drag in that randomized value here and do a random float in range. And we can choose a random range between 0 0.15 and 0 0.3. And that will choose a random value between 0 0.15 and 0 0.3. Uh, so we've got some questions. Uh, Duke Vegas, how does apply damage work if you haven't set in the script what variable it should use as health? So apply damage doesn't actually affect any anything. It's just triggering that event. Um, so this isn't actually going to do anything. We have to manually tell it what to do when it hits, gets, receives the hit. 
What it is passing through though is this damage variable. And this variable doesn't mean damage, it just means a value. Um, so you can send a value through a bullet and this is the value in this case going to be damage. You can apply, uh, apply it in this sense. But all that is doing, apply damage, is triggering this event. Okay, it's up to you as the coder and designer what you want the game to do based on receiving that damage. So here we've got health being affected. Uh, Kameem, if you shoot it with a pistol compared to a shotgun, the pistol should need a bit more to make it explode. Um, yes, true, uh, but what the way you typically do something like a shotgun is that it's actually firing out something like... It, could do like a it was multiple ways of doing a shotgun but one way of doing a shotgun is doing a um a spread of bullets and they're all going to apply 0 0.2 damage or whatever to it so they're all going to trigger this it's basically it's going to fire five um buckshot out um but if you do want to Affect damage affecting the barrel and whatever else. So if you want, like I say, a sniper rifle to deal more damage, and you actually want to use this value, um, what you could do is you need to normalize this value based on whatever the player's shooting. So one thing that it could be useful for this is damage type. So if you if we go back to the projectile, hang on. So on here we've got damage type class. You could affect whether or not this was like a power shot or um, a weak shot or whatever if you want. You could do that if you wish. Um, or you can use base damage here to determine whether it was a powerful shot, weak shot, whatever you want to do. It really does depend on what your setup is for how your gun is going to deal damage. If your guns are going to be like an RPG style where they simply just deal more damage as you level up, uh, then you need to be a bit more clever with it. But if you've got a fixed value because you're doing like a, a like a Call of Duty game where the guns are fixed in their damage, then yes, you could just do this and apply it normally as you wish. But I say we'll keep it simple. We'll just do this. Okay, so um, moving on. So when his health is deducted like so, we're then going to detect whether or not the uh, barrel explodes. So when the health is less than or equal to zero oh hello why is it doing that um we're going to go into a branch oh and if it, it look and if it's true we're going to call this explode barrel um fun, uh, event so we're going to do explode barrel and there we go and that'll do Okay, right, so we're going to close this and let's go to back to our actual explosive barrel. So all barrels are going to have that similar uh, functionality where if you shoot it, health goes away and if all the health's gone, it'll destroy itself. Okay, um, actually let's go back to that barrel parent and just simply put an explode barrel um, destroy actor. Okay, because they're all pretty much going to be destroyed. Okay, so on barrel explosive, this is where we're going to customize what explosive barrel is going to do. So what we're going to do here, let me get rid of all this stuff, is we're going to make it start a fire and then um, we'll make it explode after um, it's lost all the health. So what we need to do here is actually do that damage event again. So I'm going to go damage, event any damage. And right click and do add call to parent function. Now we need, we need to call this one because we need to also include the code that's on the parent. Because as soon as you add one here of the same name, it's going to override whatever's in the parent, unless you put this in here. So to get this, you just right click on the main event and click add call to parent function. That means it's gonna call all that code that was on the parent here, okay? So it's going to call that code first, and then at the end of here, we're going to check the health and see if it's at a certain value and apply a particle effect. But the particle effect, we haven't added yet. So let's add the particle effect. So I'm going to go add component, particle, system, and we'll call it fire. And on the right hand side, I could choose the fire template that comes with the starter content. And let's just position that where it looks 
half decent. Yeah, we quite like that. And hit compile. Back in my event graph, um, we want to make it so that when the health is below a certain value, this particle fire starts. So let's have a crack at doing that. So I'm going to go get health. Helps if I spell it correctly. And this health value, we can then check if it's less than or equal to. And we'll do 0 0.5. We also want to check whether or not this is also activated or not. Um, so by default, we don't want it on. So we want to click on it and scroll down and you'll find the activate, auto activate tick box. So untick that. Then go back to event graph, drag your fire in and check whether or not it's activated. So activated, uh, or is active, there you go. And we want to check if the, both of these are true. So go and uh, oh, sorry, it's not activated, so we need to not this, so not. Okay, so if it's not activated and health is less than 0 0.5, we want then to activate it. So this will go into a branch. And then if it's true, fire, activate. Hit compile. So let's test that out. So here's my explosive barrel, I'm going to shoot it, and there you go, starts fire. And if I shoot a bit more, it should disappear. Perfect. So we got the fire starting. Oh, uh, ba -da -da -da. so it's error is telling me because the barrel was de destroyed, we need to check whether or not it's pending kill. Okay, so uh, we need to make sure, this is trying to kill the... Um, the barrel because the parent has got the destruction code on it it's trying to destroy it here and it's still carrying on and trying to do stuff with it so we need to make sure that it's still um, valid so what we can do here is quite simply do uh, we'll do if health uh, oh sorry is greater than zero and add a pin to and and that should do it just test that out now i've still got the uh winning kill okay one way of doing it is with this fire here right click convert validate get it's still valid Crack on, and that should clear that error. Yeah, there you go. I uh, see we had some questions come up. Let's have a quick pause and see what those questions were. Um, uh, Bilal Aslam, hey, please, I request you to make a tutorial on camera lock on system. Uh, what, first or third person? Because I've done one on the third person before. Um, when we looked at the Witcher stuff, um, we did that. Um, Duke, so is this part is just like Unity prefab instances inheriting whatever changes you did to the parent? Uh, yes, yeah. Um, John, do you go to add a texture? Um, am I going to add a texture to this? No, I'm just going to leave it as colours. Um, I'll rather not waste time making textures for stuff like this because um, you know what Red Barrel is going to do. Um, And that's it. And hi, Morrissey. How you doing? Okay, so uh, we got the fire starting. So let's get him exploding. So once we've got that, we want to then get the explode barrel event. And when the barrel explodes, this is when we would make it do the explosion. So again, we need to call the parent uh, function. So it carries on the same code. And then we're going to actually we'll put this at the end. We'll disconnect that. We'll do a spawn emitter at location. Let's give us some space here. And we're going to use the explosion emitter. The location is going to be the actor's location. 
and then it's going to call the parent function which is going to tell it to destroy itself so hit compile and play boom bit bit small let's make that a bit bigger so scale here we'll do three by three by three cool nice um okay so we've got that happening um next you may also want to do a physics thing in that case we want to make an ex uh, a, um, a radial explosion as well now the best way of doing that is something i've done before on the channel uh we're making grenades and that's explosion actor so what we're actually going to do is make an explosion actor so i'm going to go blueprint class actor explosion and on here we're going to have radial force which is going to be handling the actual explosion force of it and we're also going to have the particle effect um, of the explosion like so um, on the event graph here not event graph uh, on radial force sorry we want to change the size of this and power of this by quite a lot, if I remember rightly. It's been a while since I've done this one. So impulse strength, let's just rock that up to, like, say, 100,000. Again, tweak this as you wish. Uh, force strength, I don't know, 500. Again, we'll test this out. Um, radial force. Da -da -da. Okay. Let's test that out. So I'm going to go barrel explosive. Rather than spawn emitter, we're going to spawn actor from class explosion get transform of the actor and then parent. So let's see the strength of this. I'm going to put it by these physics objects here these should be affected by this barrel but barely let's um notch it that up a little bit so um let's just increase the radius so i can't remember which settings the best way to do again let's go really high 100,000. Barely any change whatsoever. Uh, do, 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 do. Maybe full strength needs to be a lot higher. Do that to 100,000 as well. Is it actually going to do anything? Um, let's just put one over here. That should be. Oh wait, I need to tell it to do its thing. So on begin play with radio force, you need to uh, tell it to do something. What was it called? Apply. No. Uh, oh, I can't remember what it's called now. Hang on. Go to physics. Ooh. Uh, radio force. Fire impulse. That's it. It's now going to be massive, isn't it? Yeah, I got knocked back. Um, okay. Delete. Play. Oh, Jesus. I forgot to delete that one. Right, let's turn down the, the radius of that. <laughs> uh, let's do it to uh, 500. Okay. Right, so the fire impulse is what actually triggers the thing to do its business. There you go. Cool. Much better. So, yeah, so on begin play, I just done a fire impulse from the radial force, and that tells it how to blow up. Um, okay. Um, close that. And we're kind of done with the barrel. Um, once you've got the explosion, you can also deal damage on the radius of it. Um, so, with the explosion here, we can do apply radial damage. If you want to do fall off as well, you can do. Um, so the closer you are to the center of it, the more damage you'll receive. Um, so you could do that if you want. 
So base damage, I don't know, do whatever you want. Why not do one? Uh, minimum damage, one. Origin, get actor, location. Damage in a radius, uh, we'll do, this is how like the part which is gonna do the full amount of damage. So here we'll do, uh, so it's 500 in just total, wasn't it? So we'll do uh, 200. Damage out radius, 500. Damage fall off. Um, psh, I don't know. 0 0.2. So it's weakest, it'd be 0 0.2 essentially. Uh, da, 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 and we'll leave it like that. So what in theory that should do is if I put another barrel next to it, it should do a chain reaction. Oh. Oh wait, hang on. Do, 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 do. Infinite loop. Why is it doing that? I think no, it should be doing more damage. Why is it doing that? Uh, da, 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 da. It should only do a little bit of damage. Hmm. No, I don't know why it's looping me indefinitely. I do that. I do that. This shouldn't trigger any damage again. That shouldn't trigger an explosion. Uh, that's what I'm trying to do, Camille. I'm trying to make them inside their radius. They should affect each other. But it shouldn't be causing another explosion to happen. Um, so what's happening? Oh, wait, yes. Ah, uh, yes, I know. I know what it is. Kameem, you're right. Well done, man. So if we actually put this here, I don't know if this will cause issues. Let's have a look. Uh, let's test this out before I explain the issue. Cool. All right. Okay. So the issue was, um, the, this is the basically imagine this is the destroy actor. So it was actually turning explosion to affect that barrel again. So that barrel was trying to explode this barrel again, which made no sense. So you have to destroy the barrel first, spawn the explosion, which then does the chain effect for the other barrels. So to test this out, what I can do here is let's actually do something quite fun. Let's go. Um, uh, let's do another damage type. Hang on. Uh, I can't remember if it's in here or if not, we have to go up here. Damage type. Click select and we'll do explosive damage. And I believe it like that. It'll be fine. Um, And it's explosive damage type. And so when it's applying the radial debuff, it's basically saying what have I hit? I've set up for explosion. So now explode uh, barrel parent. I can use a damage type here to check whether or not it's equal to um, an explosion. So for example, it cast to explosive damage. And if it fails, it's gonna go that way. 
if it's as it if it is explosive damage i'm going to do this all again on the top path and this time it's going to go between 0 0.5 and 0 0.8 so now it should set whatever barrels are nearby on fire or not <laughs> oh no i think it worked i need to just increase the number a bit oh um Let's do health minus 0.9. Okay. No, it's not even, is it? Why is it doing that? Let's double check that it's actually receiving explosive damage. Um, so barrel parent, let's just do on here. Print string, I'm just gonna drag the damage type into the print string there. So when I shoot it, it should tell me nothing. When it explodes, uh, it's not working. But it is giving it some damage, so why the hell is that doing that? Damage type. All right, let's disconnect that and disconnect that. Bear with me, just trying to figure this one out. Why is that not doing? No, why is it not coming out with damage type? Caused by a world. Da, da, da. If not, we'll go, come back to that another time. Because I want to get on to the other, other ones here. Yeah. Okay, we'll do it another time. But we've got explosive barrels. Okay. Okie dokie. So, uh, we've got that. The next one we're going to do is um, we'll do a barrel shock. Okay. So barrel shock is going to be a bit different because what barrel shock is going to do is going to basically electrify any sort of uh, player or enemy or whatever that's standing inside of, well, inside of water. For that, we'll need a physics material. So we're going to go through the process of how to create a physics material and how to apply one. Um, and that way I'll show you how you can, what you can use it for. Um, just have a look at some questions that people have got in chat. Bear with me, hang on. Um, hey Ryan, do you have an alternative to global time dilation? I don't at the moment, no. Um, can you create a series about creating a game? For example, Pac-Man, Bomberman, other games. Um, I've got my series where you make a maze game. The next uh, series like that is coming out relatively soon, uh, for patrons anyway. Um, but as for making uh, established games, um, I can do. I haven't thought about doing it, but I can do. Um, and yeah, that's it. Okay. So let's do physics materials. So a physics material, let's get rid of the explosive one. So physics materials are ways to detect what material the player or whatever is currently in. So what we do here is I'm going to right click and create materials and you want to go, uh, not materials, sorry, physics and physical material. And we're going to go click on the existing one. And here we're going to call this one water underscore PM for physics material. Um, so with the physics material, we want to apply this to certain types of surfaces. So the way we, what, well actually let's back up a little bit. So what a physics material actually is. So if you want something to have a physics property, 
that you can easily add on to other things, you can do so here. So for example, if something's bouncy, you can change that here and just apply this to all the bouncy things you want it to be bouncy. Um, similarly, if you want it to be metal metallic or uh, slippy, slidey, you can do that here too. And you just apply this material which applies a physics to it. But what we're going to do is we can use it for a surface type. So once I've got that there, I'm going to go into Edit, Project Settings. And in there, you want to go down to the Physics tab on the left hand side. Scroll down until you find Physical Surface. And here you can have up to, what's it, 62 different custom surfaces. So my first one here is water. And we'll leave it like that. Simple as that. So I've now got a surface type as water, but you can do things like wood, snow, grass. This is how you do different sound effects for footsteps. So that's how you do that. Um, but we're not going to use it for that case tonight. So what we're going to do is we'll make a puddle on the floor. So let's make a puddle on the floor. Um, so for this I'm just going to do a plane, keep it simple and we'll just move it slightly above the ground so it's not, there you go and let's scale up a little bit okay so there's my puddle now we know how to actually apply a physics material to this well first of all we need to make a material for the plane so I'm just going to use a water material that came with this starter content so let's find the water material go water lake will do just fine and apply that to my plane Next, uh, actually, sorry, not what we'll do is right click on that and create material instance and then apply the instance to the plane. There you go. Open this instance up, and on the right hand side, you'll see the option for Fizz Material. Choose your water physical material there. Hit save. So now that's got a physics material attached to it. However, we want to make sure that physics material is tied to that surface we got. So open up your physics material again. And then go down to the bottom where it says surface type, and you should now see water as an option there. And it will have a list of all the different material options you have available to you. We can now close that, and that has now got a water material type to it. To test that out, I'm going to go into my player character and do a simple check to see what material I'm standing over. So, to check what the player is standing in, I'm just going to take the move forwards event here, do a line trace by channel. The start point is going to be the actor's location. And we're going to go straight down with the line trace. So do add vector. And we're going to add minus uh, 200 in the Z. So it goes straight down. With the out here, we can drag that out. And we're going to get surface type. And that re returns now like water or default, whatever you want to do. So with the surface type, we can use the return value here to do stuff. So we can do a switch, for example, and you can see water or default, whatever you like. But I'm going to keep it simple and just do a print string and just plug that in. So now when I walk around, it will say default until I walk on here and say water. Okay. So now it knows when I'm standing in water. Okay. Okay, so... With that done, we're now going to work on our barrel. So barrel shock is going to set off an explosion of electricity. Um, but this one isn't going to be um, destroyed. It's going to remain in the world. It's going to basically discharge. So what I'm going to do here is just going to delete the previous default ones that come with it. And in here, we're going to do um, damage. No, we do, not do damage, we do explode barrel event. So this time I'm not going to call the parent one. I'm just going to keep it as it is. But this time I'm going to spawn electricity. So to do electricity, does it come with starter content with electricity? I can't remember now. Let's have a look. Got sparks. What sparks look like. Eh, that'll do. Close enough. So We'll go into here and do spawn emitter at location. And the emitter is going to be uh, the sparks. Now, this is where it can get tricky because you need to be able to determine whereabouts in the water it currently is. So I'm still researching a best way of doing this. 
Um, there are, I, I'm sure, I'm sure there's better ways of doing this than the way I'm going to do now. But I, when I do find it a good way of doing it, a much better way of doing it, one that I'm more happy with, I'd be more happy to use, um, I'd make a video on it. So bear with me. This may be a bad way of doing it. I'm researching how to do a better way. So we're going to spawn the sparks, but we're going to determine which location we're going to spawn them in. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a, uh, for uh do um do a for loop um actually no we'll make a extra thing here so like we've got explosion we're gonna make a spark uh thing actor uh electricity we call it And on electricity, we're going to add that particle effect. So go particle system, sparks, and I don't know, sphere collision, because you want to detect when the player is going to receive damage, I guess. Increase the radius of that a little bit so it matches the sparks somewhat. There we go. Cool. So when this thing spawns, it's going to check around itself and if it detects a physics material next to it it will that is water it will spawn another shock and it will do a chain reaction like that until it doesn't so on begin play uh we're going to do a for loop yeah uh, not for loop um while loop sorry And the while loop is going to be a condition, which we're going to make a variable to be the condition here. Um, I don't know. Stop conduction. Uh, no. Um, finished conducting. I don't know. Sure, why not? Plug that in. Um, by default, that starts off as false. So this while loop will happen the entire time in the same tick until finished conducting equals full, uh, true. Um, so loop body when uh, not true don't want to finish conducting so let's be not true quite the wrong way around there you go so if it's not finished conducting it will continue doing this so what we do here do a for each loop oh not for each loop a for loop rather And it's going to check in four directions, north, south, east, west. So last index will do three. So zero and three. And loop body, we're going to do a line trace by channel. Again, we're going to check the similar to what we've done with the player. In fact, we can just copy this. So it's going to check what is underneath this electricity um, at a certain location. Uh, but the location, actually, we can't use that. So I'm screwing up. It is, by the way, one o'clock in the morning here. So bear with me. Uh, so get out of location. We want to get out of location, but also want to add a value to this. And then add those together. So, okay. So this addition here is going to be the, I can't do, I'm trying to think of a way to explain it that isn't, um, hang on, let's, let's do, um, on. okay, so imagine I've got, so this one in the middle, and I'm doing a little diagram using blueprints, hang on, so the one in the middle here, is the current electricity actor it's then going to check here this location to its immediately to its right then to its north then it's to its left and then it's to its south and apply another electricity if that's the case and that'll do the same it'll keep doing that over and over and over again okay um it's one way of doing it okay so to do that 
Uh, let's think about this. I'm doing this on the fly, so bear with me. Try and think of the maths. Oh, hello. Okay, so we're using the index, and the index we're going to do is we're going to multiply that by 90. That's going to be an angle. And we're going to make what? Uh, not what. Um, no, 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 no. I need to add that to a vector to a rotator. Uh, okay. Need to get forward Ooh. Uh, vector. Hmm. Right, hang on, space out a bit more. So I'm just working out the maths in my head. Okay, so we need a forward vector. We need to get the actor's rotation. Or oh, actor rotation, rather. There you go. Um, we then want to um, combine a rotator with that. And we're going to split this and put in the yaw there. So it's going to rotate by your. So on the first way round, way round, it'll be zero. So zero times ninety is zero. Therefore, it's not going to rotate at all. It'll just get the forward vector of it, um, and apply that to that. Uh, next time round, it'll be ninety. Then it'll be one eighty. Then it'll be two seventy, and it'll rotate it in the yaw. Turn it, basically, turn it around four degree angles. So I get the forward vector. Then we're going to multiply this by a float, which is how far away we wanted to go. So my sphere. This volume here is 86. Let's do 100. Make it easy. I'm going to times it by 50, which is radius. Oh no, that was radius. 100 is 100 radius. I think. 100. And we're going to add that to that. And in theory, that should work. It should now draw around it. So, line trace by channel. If it is. Um, Okay, so out hit, we're going to get surface type. We're also, I wonder if this will work. If we split this, I can't do it from there. Uh, break. We're then going to take the hit actor and check whether or not it is one of these ones already. So uh, if it is uh, equal to. No explosion. Self. There you go. That's better. Um, we'll go into the line trace. Like so. So now we'll only carry on doing like spawning another one if it hasn't hit itself already. So once it's done this, get surface type. We're going to check whether or not that is equal to water. So equal enum. Water. Then true, and if it's true, then we're going to tell to spawn another electricity, like we did with the barrel shock here. Well, we ain't done it yet, but when we are going to do it with the barrel shock, so here we do another spawn elect. Uh, sorry, spawn actor. I'm really out of it today. Spawn actor, and we do electricity. Spawn transform is going to come from all this stuff. So location is going to go into the spawn transform. So split. Location goes there. Rotation will leave us that. Scale leave us that. And hit compile. Barrel shock on the explosion of the barrel. We're going to take it to spawn actor from class and check to spawn electricity. And the transform is going to come from this actor here. So get actor transform. Hit compile. So let's see if this works. If I drag this onto water like so, and now shoot it, it now crashes the game because we've got infinite loop. Figured as much. Um, okay, so oh, we haven't we haven't turned this off. That's why. Right, we have to make sure that this is turned off. 
that's probably while loops so line traced by water uh, if it doesn't hit the line uh, uh, I, I'll go for it. hang on let's rethink this hmm 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 Ideally, this should be a function. Okay, let's make it a function. Because I want a local variable, so... Um, you know. mm. Hang on. Right, so we have a new... Ah, uh, damn it. <laughs> Let's think about this. So, finish collecting is false to start off with. Whilst it's false, it'll do all this and it'll go on forever and ever and ever. And ever. Whilst it's doing this on completed, that's what we want to do. On completed, we want finished conducting to be set to true. I think that's right. Let's test that out. Oh. I think there are sparks underneath the barrel. Um, let's get rid of the barrel then. Let's do that. Let's add the called parent so we can work out what's going on. Play. Okay, so the sparks for one of them is spawned, but we need to get to spawn the rest. So where's the sparks going wrong? So what I'm going to do here is on my line trace, I'm going to change the draw debug type here for duration. Hit compile. Um, I'm actually going to tell it to start as well. Higher up. Just so I can see it a bit easier. So we're going to do 200. Compile. Okay, so now if I hit play, Right, okay, so the lines are going the wrong way. Why is it going that end? Oh, wait. Uh... Okay, it's on the cushion. Mm... No, why is it doing that? Minus that in the Z. I shouldn't do anything. Why is it doing that? Let's have a look. If I disconnect that. So it, all, it always goes back down to its root. So I don't want it to do that. I want it to go straight down. Um, let's increase this, by the way, from 100 to 100 and uh, let's do 200. Hmm. This is why I like doing the live shows because you get to see actually that I don't get perfect every single time. No one does, by the way. It's a common misconception. Okay, so rather than doing that, it, I want it to go dead straight down. So why was it going flying across? This should apply that to that. So I want to add, what am I adding here? That should make it just go straight down. I don't know why it's going flying out to the side. That makes no sense. What the hell am I getting wrong? Uh, right, this bit seemed to worked fine because we saw the four going around it. The forward vector bit may be where it's going wrong. No, because I started out to the side, so that's correct. Yeah, that's correct. And then it's this end point. Why is that going weird? I've only told it to go down. I ain't told it to do anything else. Apart from when I add it on here. This is a bit that's breaking it. Why? Right, so rather than get active location, um, it's because I'm adding get active location twice, I think. If I just do... That at that. Uh, 
this is this is the changed location so if i plug that into there add minus whatever to it and then plug that in to end that should put it in cool right that's worked okay so the line traces are working but they're not returning properly and doing what i want to do so what i want to do is check this uh if hit actor oh, i want to do it's not equal to that's why i'm doing that wrong hit actor is n oh, not equal to self there we go so you see where it's now spawning other electricity bolts in it okay it's not a perfect feature i say i want to find a better solution to this um to show the water is electrified and not and make it not go into other puddles so for example if i had another puddle here like so it won't go over because it's it's cut off here yeah but if i was to increase the size of this hit play It's still not massive. It should be a lot bigger than that. Why is it not spawning more than the first amount? So that's spawned that one. Then this one's doing the checks again, but it's not checking successfully there. Why not? That makes no sense. hmm why is that not working so i've got a feeling it's something to do with this um so to test this out what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna do a print string to hit actor and then let's turn off the other print string i've got on here now what this is going to tell me it's going to tell me all the actors that are currently being hit And see if they are hitting any of the electricity. Right, so I've hit nothing, 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 plain. Okay. Um, do that again. Barrel shock, plain, 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 right. Hmm. hit the plane so why the hell is that not well, let's turn off this check and let's like ramp one rampant rampant it does mean we'll get some overlapping ones or not why the hell is that not working maybe do we have to delay the electricity coming out of it let's delay it It should keep them growing and spreading. Oish. But it isn't. Why, 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 why? Hmm. I might have to save this one for another video when I actually figure out the best solution to make a like electrified puddles. Because uh, I say I'm not happy with this method. It's it's clunky and messy. Um, Kameem, you're suggesting the for loop index only gets four. Uh, correct, but if we go back to the game, hang on, let me change it so it is persistent. And if I push play now. So you see it spreads. So it does the first one, and it checks the four. So it does this one, this one, this one, and this one. And they spawn. 
then they should also do the checks well four times. So it does one there, one there, one there, one there, which it does. But it's not spawning another electricity when it should do. Um, let's check. Like it should just spawn. more of them because they're all they're all instant so they all got their own their own they've got their own individual for loops and their own individual finish conducting tell you what, we don't actually need the while loop i don't think so we do the while loop let's go to the while loop So you see the slow spread at start, but then it stops. Why does that stop doing that? It should just carry on. Uh, let's see if it's hitting the sphere. So I'm gonna turn the sphere to be not hidden in game. Just, there you go. See, now they're not colliding with anything. So they should trigger. Are they too high up? Because I did offset them just so I can see them. This is it. It's really annoying. Oh, it was that. Bollocks. Oh, shit. Crash. It's going to crash. It's going to crash. <laughs> oh, dear. I have no idea if you guys can still hear me. <laughs> um... <laughs> can you still hear me <laughs> i don't know if it's crashed the whole laptop or i have nothing <laughs> uh that's because i took out the check to see if it's hitting itself or not um but it works <laughs> it's just spawning infinitely um okay um bear with me hang on let's see can you i'm guessing you can you can hear me yeah, cool. You can hear me. All right, it worked too well. Hang on. Let's see if I can control delete this thing. Hang on. Uh, might have to. Yeah. Uh, new for editor. End task. All right. Let's. <laughs> All right. Let's do that again. And this time, I'm gonna put that check back in. <laughs> that was silly, wasn't it? That's why you need that check. <laughs> Otherwise, it keeps doing that over and over again. It just spawns it infinitely on a loop. Oh dear. We'll wait for that to load up. Um, whilst this is loading, anyone got any questions I want to ask? I guess. So I'm still determined. I'm determined to find a better method for doing this, and I'm pretty sure there is a better way of doing it. Um. I've I've been thinking of ways to do it with decals, um, smart particle systems. I don't know. It's um, it's a tricky one. Oh, I don't know if it's saved at all. <laughs> oh dear. Well, the shock barrels aren't in the floor. Uh. Oh, and my electricity thing isn't in there either. Ah, oh, are you kidding me? Uh, would that to be open? Yes. Yeah, no, that's not right. Oh, that's annoying. Right, we know what we're doing now, so let's quickly make the electricity. Let's see if we can get it working. Always save. Don't do Orion. Don't not save. Especially a dangerous thing like that. So, I'm just going to fly through this hang on
So I'm just going to go through it as quick as possible. Do, 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 do. If I can remember it all. That's the trick, isn't it? Uh, get actor rotation. Combine rotators. Get forward vector, multiply it by uh, 200, and that'll get the start position. And then in position, we're going to add minus 200 down. Um, out hit, we're going to get surface type. We're also going to break it. Hit actor, we'll make sure it's not equal to itself or another electricity. That's what we don't want to avoid. So, what I'm going to do here is I could do a cast, but casts are really expensive. I'm trying to think if there's a better way of doing it. Let's do it with just a cast for now. I say I don't like it, but we don't want to do it for any of the electricities. Um, if it's successful, do a branch. And if it's equal to water, spawn electricity. Oh, it's not spawn, spawn actor from class, electricity, and the location come from our hit result. Right, I'm also going to do a lifespan on this thing. So I'm going to go to class defaults, initial lifespan will do uh, two seconds. Okay. Right, let's save it before it crashes again. Because it know that will. Battle shock. Uh, do a plane. Have I got the water still? Uh, lake, wasn't it? Ooh, lake. That was in the wrong right bit. Lake instance, yeah. Okay, right. File, save all. Okay. Let's have a look at this. Oh, did I not do this part? No. Um, explode barrel. Spawn emitter. Oh, not actor, sorry. Spawn actor from class. Electricity. Get actor. Transform and compile. Um, okay. Oh, destroyed barrel. Uh, called parent. see if that works kind of um so that's spawning that what have I done wrong what have I done differently uh, da, 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 da. Let's offset it by 100 so I can see it. 
duration. Okay. Mm. Uh, why is this not working? Uh, right, combine rotators, that, that seems right, that seems right, forward vector, yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I'll do a print string on this. It should appear four times saying hello. Yeah, so that's working. It's just not this. Why is it not displaying natural lines? It makes no sense. Oh, I've got to add it to the actual actor's lo. There you go. Forgot to add the actor's location. Right, so we've got some lines going on, but it's still not doing it correctly or where I want it. So, get actor location, uh, get forward vector, da da da. Uh, remove pin. Uh, son of a gun. Like that, but I'll do it. Right, well, that's going that way. Why is it going that way? Oh, wait, go that way. That's why. Right, so they're going down, but they're not doing anything. If I, has this thing got the physics material attached to it? Yep. Do we have the physics material? Yep. That's all working. So that's doing that correctly. That's doing that correctly. Is the cast to hit actor? Um, oh, wait, I want to go on cast failed. That's why. There we go. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Hmm. <laughs> Done it again. Why has it done that? Had the cast on it. Is it because the hit trace was happening inside the circle so it didn't detect the hit? Oh, it's not visible as well, so that's why. Oh, God, I'm annoying. Okay. The re I know why it broke again. It's because the hit trace was on a visibility channel. The particle the electricity particle effect isn't part of that system so i won't detect the hit from that um so let's uh quit there <laughs> oh god damn it um I should have finished this stream about 20 minutes ago, but I'm determined to get at least the shocking part kind of corrected. Right, at least I saved it this time. Okay, so how can I fix this? Oh, more one. Uh... Oh, I didn't save this bit. Okay. Uh, get. Actor uh, location. Okay. 
Right, so the cast we can't do because the line trace by channel won't work. It won't hit because it's not a blocking hit. Yeah, because these don't block. Can't have a collision on it. Um, the sphere has collision. But not a blocking collision. And I don't want it to block. Um... So I can test it out, but it's probably going to crash again every time. So, I don't know. How can we, how can we just test this out safely? I guess what we can do. Right, so I'm turning it to block visibility trace channels. So this is a visibility trace channel. It'll block it. So it should trigger that, and it should be safe. But let's think of a safe way to test this out. So I'm going to drag electricity out here. I need to turn its lifespan off to test it out. Hang on. And then on the player actor, we're going to do a line trace on them as well. So line trace by channel. And do it on the forwards. The forward, by the way, is like a tick. These are ticks. Input whenever you do an in access event, they're ticks. Um, get actor location start point get forward vector mm. 400 we go far add that to swamp and add that to the end. So on a print string, the actor's name. So there you go, it works. So it you see it's working now with electricity. It blocks electricity. Okay. So we got that. Next we've got to test this. Um, uh, for also, for safety sakes, what I'm going to do is on electricity here, where I've risen it above 100, I'm going to do 120. Because that's larger than the radius of that circle. So that way, the line trace will start outside of this actor before going into it. Hopefully that'll work. Okay. Okay, are we ready to test this out? Oh, let's give it a um, lifespan. Uh, two seconds. Right. L uh, let's test this out. Oh, pardon me. File, save all. Hold on to your computers. <laughs> uh, right. No. What's causing that to still talk? Oh, wait, it's the player character, isn't it? Let's uh, delete that. Hmm. Did it not save the barrel? No. For God's sake. Explode barrel. Parent event. There's one thing else I want to show you before I sign off tonight. So we'll, we'll probably skip the other battles and do that one next. Hang on. Um, and that is spawn actor from class. Uh, electricity. Okay. Now we can save it. Save all. Play. Okay, we did that thing. Uh, let's test with the debug on. Mm hmm. 
Oh, going cast success again. Cast failed. Okay. Right. Save all. Whoop. Yeah. And there it goes. Nice. So that'll work for any shape we make with this material. So, I mean, I can just add another one. But it'll work for anything. You can put it on any mesh. It'll be fine. So it could be a weird shape if you like. Obviously, too big and it will go nuts. Yeah. And there you go. A shock barrel. And obviously, you just make it so when the player's inside that collision, it deals damage to whoever's inside that collision. So let's go and... Um, on the sphere, add event... Uh, our component begin overlap. I don't know if this will work for overlap. Let's try it. So if it's overlapping, we can then um, apply damage to the other actor. So apply damage other actor like so. And for the sake of this. What we're going to do here on power explode, we're going to any damage, we're just going to make it explode just to test it out. So, if electricity barrel um, is dealing damage to an explosion barrel, it will detonate it. Yeah, there you go, it went. And this one went as well. Cool. Let's show that again. I think we've got a trigger there. A chain reaction, yeah. Yeah, pretty cool. So, oh, I'm getting affected by that collision, the um, explosion. We have to tell the explosion to destroy itself. <laughs> so, explosion. And once it's fired its impulse, we want to uh, destroy it. So we're going to go to class defaults, lifespan 0 0.5. There you go. Oh. Let's turn off the, uh, the test of the line trace. Be none. Cool. Okay, so we've got a cool effect going on there. And I say that works for absolutely anything. So, for example, if I were to move this over here. In theory, I should climb up the wall. I won't because it's too high. That's why. So I only work on puddles of a similar height. Um, but never mind. There you go. Okay, so we've got explosive barrels and we've got the shock barrel. So that's it, really. Uh, the last one we're going to do is poison. But we've run out of time for that. I would much rather show you something else you do with physics materials. But poison one would be effectively a bit simpler because it'd spawn a poison cloud. So rather you've got electricity and explosion, you also have poison cloud. And you can have a um, poison cloud deal damage um, and you can make it hover in the air. So it's similar, similar to explo the explosion, but the explosion doesn't have it, but the poison doesn't have an explosion. It has a, part, a particle smoke instead. Um, I'll screw it. You know what? We can make it probably quite quick. Let's make it really quite quick. Uh, so it's similar to explosion. So I'm going to right click and to duplicate explosion. Um, but we're going to call it poison cloud instead. Poison cloud. Uh, we're going to have a smoke. Like so. Uh, it's not going to have a radial force on it. I'll just have that. And have a sphere collision. Um, we don't want it to fire impulse. Uh, we don't want to do radial damage. 
product system is just going to be auto activated. Yep, cool. Does that. Barrel poison. Explode barrel. Uh, ooh. Create call to parent function. And then spawn actor from class. Poison. Actor transform. And that's spawn a barrel poison. Like so. So oh drag it into world first. And it's not make sure the poison cloud actually looks like a poison cloud. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's not the greatest thing. Is there better parks of uh, Steam? What about Steam? Ah, oh, Steam's better. What are your Steam? That's better. So, Battle Poison, uh, Myth Destroyed, Poison Cloud. There you go. It's just, the exp it didn't last for long enough. So, that's because I've still got. 0.5 set so if I change it to five seconds instead and there's your poison cloud okay um, I'll probably make that a bit bigger so probably go uh, four 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 increase the size of the sphere Like so. There's your poison cloud. Um, and you can make that move, I guess, in the wind if you want. So, add a slight movement to it. In fact, probably easier to just give it projectile movement. But give it really, really slow. And negative one in the gravity, so it starts rising up a little bit. We go no, no point, no minus, no, minus no point one. And da, 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 da. okay, that do. Let's see if that works. So it should move. I don't know, it's hard to tell. Let's turn on the sphere so we can actually see the sphere. And let's up the projectile movement. Let's do 50. Oh yeah, it's moving. You can see it. So you can make it move with projectile movement just fine. But there you go. So let's say bang bang bang. Poof, poison cloud. And again you just do a check whether or not the players inside the poison cloud and not deplete their armor or whatever you want to do. We've got shock. And you've got explosive battles. Done. Three battle types. Oh. Um Let's have a look. Uh, Flare, is it possible to affect park systems with in-game wind? Yes, you can. It, we haven't got time to go into it now, but you can do it um, in both Niagara and Cascade. Uh, uh, hit stops in combat animations. Um, I don't have any tutorials, and I don't know of any existing ones. Um, Sadly, I don't have much more I can go on uh, to show you. Um, I guess you could do... I don't know. I, have to, I would have to look into it a bit more. Um, but I would suggest maybe like um, an interrupt animation. It cuts to an interrupt animation. Before we go, I'm going to show you one last thing. 
regarding physics materials and how you can use them and that's going to be using them in a landscape uh, painting um, so in 425 we've got modes up the top here that's moved from over here to here so in 425 if you're wondering where it's gone it's up here so go to modes landscape and we're going to go down and click create so here's your landscape editor it's a bit new a bit different you can sculpt it all the same but all the tools are up here now so it's a bit different so what we're going to do is we'll make a material landscape um, that I've made a video on before so if you want to know how to do that you can find a video on it but I'm going to quickly go through it now make a new material landscape so I saw some people online wondering how you actually apply a physics material to the individual landscape layers because the way you typically do a landscape painting is do a landscape layer blend and you can add arrays to it so we've got like grass for example and we're going to have um, water I don't know okay and we'll keep it simple this one's going to be green grass and this one is going to be blue for water okay it's very simple so people are wondering how do you actually do this well oh probably once you made the landscape material you right click on it create the instance like you would normally go to the uh select tool select the landscape and drag that material onto it so now it's going to compile black everywhere then we're going to go back to our landscape mode go to paint and you'll find your layers in the bottom left here I could then want to add layer information files. So it says none at the moment. So you click on the add button, weight blended layer, and yep, OK. And OK. So we can now paint in color. So water, we can just paint in some water here, for example. OK. So once it compiles, this is it. So there's blue. OK. So there's water. But how do you actually make that apply to that? Well, if you double click on your landscape layer information here um, you'll see physics material and you can choose water like so and you can do that for all the other information and now that will detect when you're walking over just the painted part of that material okay so that's in the landscape layer information that you get applied to the landscape layers um, that's it that's what you have to do oh probably right I'm going to call it night. I'm really tired. So, uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, had a few hiccups, a few crashes, most silly mistakes, but we all, it was a learning experience for us all. So, hopefully you've learned something. I definitely did. Uh, and we made uh, successfully made three different types of barrels. Uh, we made explosive barrels, we made shock barrels, and we made poison cloud barrels. Um, I will continue investigating a shock barrel and see if they can find a neater solution to it. Um, but for now, that is all I can come up with, um, that spawning of the um, sparks. But I will investigate and see what I can come up with. And, uh, and once I do, I'll make a video on it. Thanks very much for watching. Um, so what's coming up this week? This week, you've got another episode again um, Monday or in a few hours time for uh, oh, probably. for the new Making Your, game se uh, Making Your First Game series episode. Um, Wednesday, you'll continue getting the uh, notification system series um, on YouTube, and the ability system also continues on Friday. If you're a Patreon member, uh, this week you can look forward to the start of the crafting series. So if you want to learn how to do crafting, you can find that on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Ailey. That'll be starting this week. Uh, for patreons as well as the continuation of the melee ai series so if you want to learn how to do third person ai melee attacks and things like that and then how to do like crowd control and all that stuff um we're doing that in um patreon as well this week too there's loads of stuff really cool neat stuff coming out uh, over the next month or so um i've got a post on my patreon page please check it out get you excited to see what i've got planned coming out including uh, what people have been requesting for quite a long time is taking all these various systems i've made and how to combine them so learning how to put inventory quests crafting skills shopkeeper all that together and we're going to work on a it's going to be quite a lengthy series but we're going to work on a fps rpg game combining showing how you combine all those elements together to create a 
full system for a game. So that's coming out soon as well. Oh my God, I've got to stop yawning. I've got to go to bed. Anyway, thank you all, everyone, and um, I'll see you all next time. Cheers, guys.